another tune of the month. I hope your summer's going well, full of lots of music and adventure. Um, this month I have to share with you a hornpipe, which is a type of tune that's been conspicuously absent from the tune of the month thus far. So we're going to use July to fix that. Um, a hornpipe, for those of you who don't know, um, is a Celtic form of tune. It appears in both Scottish and Irish traditions, but the kind we're going to do today is a dotted rhythm hornpipe that's predominantly Irish. It's the sister tune to the dotted rhythm strespites. We've done a couple on this series um, out of the Scottish tradition. Um, but the difference is that a strespay, a Scottish strespay, uh, the dotted rhythm changes direction. It goes da dum, da 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 dum, dum, short, long, long, short, short, long, long, short, which is hard to say. Um, in the Irish hornpipes, the dotted rhythm remains the same every time. It goes dum, da dum, da dum, da dum, da dum, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. It gives it this nice, fun little galloping sort of feel, and it's very smooth and easy. Um, and I like it a lot. It's very fun to play. So, Irish form of tune, but the actual hornpipe we're going to learn today is French-Canadian. Um, the French-Canadian tradition has a lot of strong roots in the Irish music, um, just as there are other Canadian fiddling types that take a root from the Scottish music, like the Cape Breton tradition. So it's fun, the mix of Irish and Scottish roots you get up north of the border. Um, this tune appears in the Don Messer collection. It's one of my very favorite hornpipes, so much so that I put it on my album Flight to kick off my French-Canadian set there. It's called Le Tableau, which means the painting or the picture. And here it is. Oh. Let's get started. So, um, the blanket thing to think about um, as you do this, we're going to talk a little bit today about bowing and a little bit about how to create variation. The bowing, um, for this dotted rhythm, you'll, you may have noticed already I was using mostly separate bows, a couple of slurs, we'll get into that in a few minutes. Um, but as you do this separate bow in the dotted rhythm, make sure your left hand, your right hand, your bow hand, or I guess your left hand if you're lefty, um, is very gentle and soft. The hornpipes are very graceful and very fun and dancey, and if you try and power through this, you're going to lose that effect. So, chill way out. Sound much better and be easier to play. Um, if you were listening to the form of the tune, as I hope you are, if you are a follower of Tune of the Month, you'll hear that this is a standard t uh, form, part one, part two, part one comes back, and then the ending in both sections. So I'm going to slow it down so you can start to piece it together. One, two, three. A 
section slowed down. Did you hear part one, part two, part one ending? Um, let's break it down. Here's just part one. One, two, three. passage. We got into chromatics a little bit last month with the Jiggs Diamond Thumeyers. And here we go again with lots more in this tune. Chromatic means you're moving by half step, which means you're going to be sliding one of your fingers. This one is high one, move it back, low one, then to open. And it has that uh, Looney Tunes falling off a cliff or if you're going up, climbing up the stairs sort of feel to it. All right, here's part one one more time. in part two, this one is going up and it's on your second finger. Here's part two again. Chromatic, one, low two, high two. Did you catch it? If you didn't, rewind the tape, go back and grab it. Here at the top, it goes back to part one. You guessed it, chromatic. Characteristic hornpipe ending. Super difficult. Easiest thing in the world. I'm totally teasing you. So that's the characteristic. Anytime you hear a tune, if you want to know it's a hornpipe, if at the end you hear one, two, three, bum, 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 you know it's a hornpipe. Whether it's a Scottish style one that sounds more like a reel or an Irish one that has this dot, they all have this ending in common. So you never embellish it in any way. Sit on it. That's the whole A section. Um, we're going to get into how to put some triplet variation into it in just a moment, but first, let's go ahead and look at the B. So we're watching for those chromatics, and you're watching for the part one, part two, part one structure. And in fact, part one is going to start off with a chromatic first finger going down as the pickup note. One, two, three. <laughs> So that's a busy part one. Did you catch the two chromatics? Here's the first one in the pickup. Now rising on the second finger. All right. Now, the first triplet. Did you catch that? Triplet, duple, duple. Means we play three notes in the space where you would normally fit two. Now, we talked about how to deal with triplets in your bow arm. Um, I think it was September, the Cape Breton tune, uh, The Wing Commander. And anytime you have a triplet, it's going to put you backwards bow. So the next duple, you must either slur or hook your bow to get back the right direction. This is no exception. So I'm going to slur this triplet and then go up bow twice. Up and then I'm all right again. All right, this is a self-defensive bowing that you should be doing automatically every tune you play. Here's part one of the B section, put all together, two chromatics, and then the triplet bowing correction. Slurred triplet. Back to part one. Triplet, slur, hook. Okay, now here's the ending. Hornpipe ending. This is the one place in the tune that I really am slurring. Just a bit of variation. But, um, I'm going to slur two duples, and then slur 
are two triplets. Triplet, triplet, end it. And because there are two triplets back to back, that will correct my bowing for me. I don't need to do any extra slurring afterward. Here's the ending one more time. Alright, and that's the whole tune broken down slowly. If there are any parts of it that are still eluding you, rewind the video. Watch it over and over and over. You don't need to hear me talk more now. You can do your uh, YouTube slider for that. So, let's talk about the really fun part with these uh, horn pipes, which is how to add variation using the triplets. This is a strategy I'm going to show you in a very generic sense how it's applied. I'm not going to teach you a variation to this hornpipe, mostly because I don't have one. I kind of throw in triplets wherever I feel like it, and I want you to have the skill of being able to throw in triplets anywhere you like too, because then you can use it on other hornpipes rather than just this one. Here's the basic strategy. Anytime you have a skip between two notes, Right? which is to say it's not moving in a scale, like the beginning of the B section. Here. Those are all skips. Skip, because I'm playing my first finger to my third and skipping over the second. This one's a skip too. This is not. This one is. Anytime you have a duplet skip, you can fill in the missing scale note and get the triplet, like this. Or I guess you have one more available. I probably wouldn't play that last one, it gets a little heavy, but certainly the first two. Did you notice since I had two back to back, I didn't have to add an extra slur? If I only do one, I do. Alright, so that's a good rule of thumb to know in your boat. Two triplets back to back, nothing you need to do. Only one triplet, slur or hook the next duple. Alright, so that's the basic strategy. Um, you'll hear one more thing that I'm going to do before I apply this to the sections. Sometimes there's a situation where the duple is not a skip, it's only a step. So technically I don't have room for a triplet but I'll do it anyway. And how I do it is by using that chromatic. So I use this a lot in the A section. Did you see how I did that? That's just a step. Low one, high one. And that gives me room for the triplet. So that's an even cooler way you can do it. All right. So I'm going to go play both the A section and the B section slowly and fit in some triplets so you can get some ideas of where to put it. You'll also notice that sometimes I'm going to slur my triplets to make them smooth and glidey, and sometimes I'm going to bow them separately to give them a little more cheeky, dancey punch. Regardless, if I have one triplet, I will hook or slur the next duple. If I have two back to back, I will do nothing extra. Here we go. A says I'll play one A and one B to give you the idea. You can copy and then go home and, well, you are home, but um, you can turn off the tape and find even more possibilities yourself. One, two, three.
repeat. I did more triplets than the first time through. That's a very good strategy in general. Don't throw all your triplets the first time you played it, because then it just sounds like and people think that's the tune. Instead, keep it simple the first time, and each time you repeat, add a couple more triplets as you see fit. And uh, so hopefully that gives you an idea of a new toy to play with. Uh, it works in reels too, by the way, but the hornpipes are especially built for this because they have a lot of skips in them, a lot of arpeggio jumps. So uh, play with this tune, go uh, take any other hornpipes you know and play with it in that. And as always, if you would like written sheet music for this tune of the month, um, I will send that out with my email list, my monthly email list. Uh, you can sign up for on my website, www.mariblack.com. And I will send it out with all the bowings and the variations and all the things we talked about this month, especially for you email subscribers. So I hope you enjoyed the tune. Have fun with it. Teach it to your friends. And I will see you here next month for another tune. See you guys.